Hey y'all, I'm Kayla Wan, and this is the live interview at Uptown Studios. Who am I? I am Kay Lawan, Kay Lawan the Don, get a nigga mind racing. I can say that, right? <laughs> okay, I am an artist. People always want to say I'm a rapper. I am a poet. I am a creator. I don't want to just say that I'm a rapper because I don't know, I just feel like that's so restricting. So, I am everything all in one. Kayla Wan is my real name. It's definitely my government. My first name, don't judge me. My mom and my my mom and my dad. My dad's name was Carl, first off. So we're gonna start there. Um, my first name is Carla, and my middle name is Lawan. My mother's name is Lawanda. My dad's middle name was Juan. So the creativity, you know, little ghetto. So <laughs> That's that's what they conjured up from that. I actually hated that my name was Carla, honestly. And until now. Yeah, until now I'm very much hype about it, but if my dad was here, we have to sit down and talk about that cuz I actually wanted to change my name for a minute. Now I wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> but nobody wants to be 16 being called a grandma name. So like, don't do that to your kids. That's wrong. Uh, that's a good question. If someone asks, what's my story? I would say um, I'm a young adult as of right now. I started out, well, I'm from Six Mile in Wyoming, west side, you know, <laughs> we don't do the east side, but I'm from Six Mile in Wyoming. I went to a private middle school called Jezu, and as far as high school, I went to Groves, which is in Birmingham. So that shocks a lot of people. I went to one um, school my whole middle school year, so from kindergarten to eighth grade. And then as far as high school, same school, freshman year to senior year. Um, I lost my dad when I was eight. So that was like the start of my rocky life. And I ended up being with my mom because at first it was kind of like a one household, one week, next household, the other week. Um, once I got with my mom, things kind of like changed. I turned into like a rebel. I was doing whatever I wanted to do. I was uh, very aggressive, I would say. Um, eventually I got into like the music side of things when I started dating someone. And they kind of like, they were already doing music before me. so. I always thought it was like pretty cool, but I never actually tried. And a producer named OK Jones, like that's his Instagram, I'm pretty sure people are pretty familiar with him. He did like a competition on Instagram and that was like the first beat I hopped on really. And I was like, dang, I sound sweet. I was really doing it for fun. Like, I'm just like, let me test the waters. But I posted and everybody was like, fire emojis, fire emojis. So I'm like, okay, let me try it out for real. Um, so I just went from there and I kept trying it. And you know what's crazy? Somebody came into my studio session and was like, yo, you fire. Like, you got potential. Let me manage you. I was looking at him like, what? I'm about to let you manage. I don't even know you. Like, you so random. And I'm one of those people, listen, don't judge a book by his cover because that's what I did that day. Granted, I still gave him a chance and he actually put me in the door to be where I am today. So shout out to him, Leslie Winfrey. Love you. I just gave you like the largest answer. No. <laughs> um, I'm a lash tech. My business is called Vaze, V-A-Z-E, Lash Extensions. I'm on Google and I'm also getting into makeup. I went to school to be an esthetician. So that was like my first passion until I realized the mic was golden. So I would say, yeah, that. And then I also do waxing. I'm getting into a few different things, not like body waxing, cause that's a no-go. I don't want to be down there, um, but I'm definitely good at up top. <laughs>
Um, I actually remodeled my suites. So besides the music, um, my suite was like real, it looked like a dungeon at first. I put the tile in. I created a kind of like plank slash bed style lash bed. So it has a headboard and everything. Um, and I also painted the walls. I literally redesigned my entire suite myself. So I'm pretty handy. Um, I officially dived into music, like when I first started, that was 2019. That's when I hopped in the studio with OK Jones. So I started writing from then on. But again, I was like always playing with it. I was never taking it serious. Like if I feel like it, if I think of it, I write it down. If I go to the studio, I'm just in the studio. Um, I didn't start taking it serious till this year, honestly. I dropped a song last year called K's Here, which is at 26K now on YouTube. But even then I was just like dropping music like willy nilly, like no organization, no planning, just, I'll, I'm just like, whatever, somebody's gonna hear it. Whenever they do, they do, I don't really care. But now I'm like, now I gotta be more strategic about it because it's a real like sauce behind it. So I'm figuring it out. Uh, my first song was a remix to Freaky Girl by Gucci Mane. And it's not out, I actually think I posted it on SoundCloud. I don't know if I deleted my SoundCloud though, but uh, I'm trying to think of the lyrics. Um, can't uh, find it? I, I, yeah, I feel like I can't, it's in my notes more than likely. Um, it's like, I go deeper with it, real nasty chick, real greasy with it, tease me with it, go and run me down, baby, please me with it. Ah. I wish I could fix the room or the rest. It was so old. Like, I can't even believe I was rapping like that. I was real vulgar in the beginning. Like, I kind of got a little cleaner now. But then I was on some like, um, who was like a real vulgar, vulgar artist? Is it Khalees? No, it's, it's Kia. When she was like the whole my neck, my back wave. I was like that. That was real vicious. <laughs> I grew up, I guess. <sighs> that is a great question. Um, as a female artist in Detroit, the range for getting in the door, I feel like is a lot smaller because there are a lot of guys who are like vultures and when you're pretty and you know, you got a little nice size, you know, yeah. Um, business turns into personal real fast. No matter how much you wanna keep it professional, um, it might start off as like a, a business thing and then it quickly turns into you trying to, you trying to, you trying to do that? Is you trying to stay late night hours? Cause I'm trying to eat some that ain't food. Yeah. So, um, it's a little more difficult and having a talent really doesn't matter anymore. Like you can have a, you can be a cold artist and a lot of guys, because it's a male dominated industry for the most part, they, some of them see you as competition really, like they get kind of jealous and which is crazy because I feel like they're, they have a better chance than we do. So it's like, why not rock with me? Let's work as a team, but no, it doesn't work like that. So is it biased? Yes. Is it devouring? Devouring, yes. I hope I pronounced that right. As a child, my favorite artist, um, Fantasia and Biz Marquis. Biz Marquis was in my dad's car, Fantasia was in my mom's car. Those are my like two faves. I still bang both to this day. Granted, not as much as Biz Marquis, but Fantasia, oh, she gets some spins in my car. Yeah, I think I can sing. I can't, but in the car I can. In the shower I can too. <laughs> A good half of my life, I feel like I can sing. <laughs> Um, the changes I would like to see in music is real lyricism. I am so tired of hearing the same no substance lyrics about shoot them up, bang, bang, or twerk that, shake that. Eh, eh. No, like, please add more wordplay. Please talk about life. Please talk about real life things that people experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, 
we know your booty big, sis. Like, we know the cat. We know. We get it. We know you never shot a gun before, but you like to talk about you shooting a gun. Relax. So if we can get like the whole 90s, 80s back in here with the music, I would love that. But yeah, yeah. I, I definitely improved with the music. Um, I'm not as, well, lyrically, I know how to say things to where it's kind of like you got to read between the lines. You really have to know what I'm talking about to know. Like, you know, when we were kids, we would be singing like, to the window, to the wall. But we never really knew what we were saying. Like, as we get older, we get, we listen back, we play back the song and we like, I was, I was saying stuff I wasn't supposed to be, I should have got a whooping for this. But instead we were like vibing out. That's how my music is now. So like, granny, I'm not catering to the kids, but if they were to play my music, they'll probably sing along to it and not understand it, which is the goal if they were to hear it. Like, I don't want them to actually know what I'm talking about. I'm not necessarily looking to sign to a label, but I am open to it. I like being independent. I do pretty good independent right now. Um, granted, I haven't gotten as far as I would like to be just yet, but it just depends on what they're offering me. Like if it's what I'm looking for and it can really help my family and not like kill me in the long run, <laughs> cause I do think labels kill their artists, but you know, mixed emotions. Um, I'm like into conspiracy theories, but uh, directly, no, I'm not like looking forward to that. I would like to stay as independent as possible. My largest personal goal outside of music is to create a dance destination spa, a few destination spas and franchise them. Um, I always liked um, the Oasis Gardens. I think that's in like Ann Arbor. And I like spas in general. And I like the way they have it set up to where you feel like you're not actually here. Like you're in a building and then when you walk out, you're like, dang, it's light outside. It just snowed. Like, I love that. So that's the goal. I would love to make like destination spa retreats with under my business now. So vase, but bigger. And I would also like to um, create like academies for young girls who like don't really have a lot of direction in life. I want to give them the opportunity to become young bosses without having to pay for it really. So if I can do like a nonprofit thing with that, that's the goal. Music is just, if it rides, it rides, but I have a different vision for life. Wow, that was a great question. Do I remember my dreams? Who thought of that? Who thought of this question? That's a great question. I actually write majority of my dreams now. Like I have a dream journal app in my phone and my dreams are almost so vivid to the point that like I know how to control them now. That's going to sound really weird to a lot of people, but I'm a weirdo. So we're here. Um, I know how to control my dreams. Like I know when I'm dreaming. I know how to wake myself up. I know how to maneuver, like walk around and like interact with the people that I'm dreaming with. Like most people who dreams are like real, real willy nilly. And I have a lot of control in there. Like I actually like going to sleep for that reason. People are gonna think I'm crazy, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty like all around, like very much played out like a movie. Granted, like the scenes, I think everybody's dreams are like this, where it's like you're here and then you're there one moment, but yeah, I dream in color. I see buildings, I see numbers. I remember them when I wake up. Um, there's actually a fun fact that they say you should keep your eyes closed for 15 seconds and like replay your dream once you first wake up. Don't touch your phone. Don't look at everything that's around you because your dream goes away a lot faster. Really let it process. And I guarantee you, you'll be able to like play it back like a movie. What is my sign? I am a Libra, sign of the scales. Love it here. <laughs> do, you, do you believe that? Um, eh, mixed emotions. 
Because when I meet other Libras, I feel like they're nothing like me. Um, everybody is their own person at the end of the day, but some stuff is kind of accurate. Like every cancer I've met for the most part gets under my skin, except my best friend, love her. But cancers are crazy and so are Scorpios. So maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, does it affect my dating? Does zodiac signs of 50 50 like if somebody tells me they're a cancer since my ex was a cancer i'd be like all right nah like i almost don't want to text you back i almost might not go on another date with you but i still give it a chance so not exactly it just sits in the back of my mind like if you're gonna if you do something i'm gonna be like it's because you're a cancer and I knew from the jump I shouldn't have dealt with you. Is that the same with names? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't deal I can't date somebody with the same name as somebody else that I dated. Cause all it's gonna make me do is think of that person. And I'm gonna correlate everything you do to that individual. Like you're their twin or something. That's weird. I can can you imagine that? Like somebody you dated, name is like Daisha or something and then you meet another Daisha and like y'all are like doing something intimate and you say her name and you get to thinking about this like oh no uh-uh no I don't want to think about the other person I dealt with while I'm dealing with you <laughs> would I pay half rent hell no <laughs> half <laughs> I mean shoot if I'm gonna pay half I might as well pay the whole you want like no uh-uh I'm not going, I'm not going half rent. <laughs> no way. And I, that is wild. They out here going half. You still got to get up and go work and cook and clean and get cheated on? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. If I'm going to sign up to get cheated on, somebody's paying the full rent and it ain't going to beat me. Yeah. Ladies, listen. <laughs> um... Dang, I hope this doesn't air like while I'm still talking to him because I kind of am still talking to him. But he, um, damn, I hope he doesn't watch this. But <laughs> he like, I was making a joke with a guy and like I see he had really nice like clean nails. And I was like, you know, we can go like on a manicure pedicure date together or whatever, whatever. I was like, but your feet are probably ugly. All guys' feet are ugly. And we were at, I'm not gonna say where we were at because he's gonna know I'm he's gonna know I'm talking about him anyway. Uh, we were at Bar Louie and he took his shoes and socks off at the bar and like showed me his feet, like lifted them up, like hit one of these. And I was like, wow. I I couldn't I thought I was on an episode of Punk. Yeah, wow. You know what's freaking crazy? He showed me a picture of one of his homeboys, same date. Like, same time, he showed me a picture on Instagram and one of his homeboys commented, like, looking real zesty. So that is wild that you just said that. God, he's such a nice person, though. But that really blew me. Like, did you just take your socks and shoes off and flick your toes? Like, what? So, yeah, that, that was wild. That was wild. Did you? I'm sorry. Have I, have I ever been scammed? Yes, because I was ditzy for like a minute. Um, the first time I got scammed, I think it was like for $380, maybe four, maybe $400. I paid a Instagram page up front for a hairstyle. And granted, I've done this before, which that was a scam too. I'm not even gonna say her name, but at least she did my hair. Like, but the page, it looks so legit. Like the bundles was so cute. I'm like, I love this hairstyle. I, they're like, okay, first off, whoever was behind this page, I have to give you your props because you even booked the day with me and you told me, you even sent me a location. <laughs> They took it so far. That was scandalous. I pulled up and everything, and I'm like, why aren't they texting back? And that's when I realized, like, it was a scam page. I called one of my friends, and it was like, 
yeah, girl, everybody gets scammed by them. And I'm like, what the hell? Y'all saying this like this was a corner store advertisement or something. Like, this is normal. But besides that, um, I got scammed for like $500 or $580 with a Bitcoin thing. This was like when I was in my phase of I just want some money. That was the dumbest decision I could have ever made because I could have just invested in my own brand. But instead, I was like, I want some fast money. And then like it was one of them posts where they'd be posting like, oh, I just got a new car and um, tap in with such and such. They helped me with investing and I fell for it because it was one of my homegirls page that got hacked. I was so stupid. Ugh. You can't get me now, though. <laughs> like I'm, I'm smarter than that. But you know what's crazy? Because you asked me about zodiac signs earlier. I read in my birth chart that my signs specifically, like when I was born and stuff, were actually easily scammed. So <laughs> that blew me. Yeah, so like, I guess it was in my DNA to get scammed. That's effed up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay, yes. The OnlyFans. Okay, listen. I like to play with social media. So not only did I tell people I had OnlyFans, I made people think I was pregnant. So, like, I'm pretty random with things. Um, be prepared on what I'm thinking of next because it's coming. But, yes, I made people think I had OnlyFans. And I have a link tree in my bio. So I did get people to click my link tree listen to my music. You thought I was about to post some booty. And instead, now you got to put your earphones on. <laughs> but um, the pregnancy one, that got Instagram in an uproar. Like everybody was DMing me like, congratulations. Wow, you're pregnant. Yeah, with an EP. <laughs> you got to get, you got to think of something. Clickbait is the thing now. Wait till I tell, listen, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a dinner with Jay-Z. Oh, I don't know, 50K or dinner with Jay-Z? 50K could go along. I know how to work 50K, but damn. What would Jay-Z gonna say to me? What if he heard me rap? He might be like, you fire. I could get a deal out of that. I don't know, I might bet my odds. Is it being recorded? <laughs> if it's getting recorded and posted on social media, I'm gonna take my chances at the dinner. Damn, I wish I could pick both. <laughs> you know what? I'll make up my mind. I'll take the 50K and I'll try to flip it. <laughs> I'll, buy, I'll buy VIP tickets. One day I'm gonna see him. <laughs> 50K me please. <laughs>